FNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this 22nd day of July. This is actually 8.06 a.m. in the morning, so it'll be recorded and played back at my usual time, the noontime show, and thank you for being here. So, nice start to the, uh, to the week. We've got a very early start. The Dow's up a little bit. The future's up 57 in the Dow, up 8 in the E-mini. This is going to be an important moment, and I'll tell you what. Within the context of uh, Chapman Wave methodology, let me just go through this really quickly. Uh, we're always looking, at, I believe there are just three patterns in the market, straight up and straight down, arch formation and cup formation. You can get a combination of the, uh, the, the three, but uh, it's the same principle. I try to find the most obvious low bar to start a wave count. We're always looking from a trough low going successively higher with each each peak labeled alphabetically uppercase on the way up lowercase on the way down on the way down the uh, the alphabetization is really part and parcel of, of the structure of the technicals on the way up we can just use peak a peak b peak c and the fourth highest peak peak d and say aha even though you can go to e f and g the fourth highest peak peak d is where other things can happen good summary here we go where are we? We made a peak D in the Dow on the 16th of July, all-time high, 27,398. One of the reasons why I said to subscribers to my opening call, my daily newsletter, that we had gone long on the very low bar of the 3rd of June, where the low was 24,701. We went long at about 24,000, about 24,823 as it opened that day with a doji candle. We've taken a little bit off. We still hold a long position. But at the same time, I said on the 16th, we're going short today. If the Dow goes to 27,390, over 27,390, it went to 27,398, um, seven points higher. And we have a short position, a separate thing completely. And I'll explain the reason why. Because in this pattern, looking at the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, and I'll show this a little bit more what I, I give subscribers every single day in my newsletter, you can see that uh, the moving averages were all very strong on the, on the left side chart. But on the right side chart, what you were getting is a slight divergence as the technicals were beginning to fade. And the count that I had expecting a leg D had extended a little bit higher, and we had a doji candle the day before the high of the 15th. And that was a warning to me to say that, you know how if you throw a ball up in the air, there's that moment where the ball just stops dead. It is neither going up nor is it going down. It is at zero, zero gravity. And then it starts to arch over and it turns down. Well, to me, that little doji candle followed by a second doji candle, tiny little doji plus sign, a doji is a, like a plus sign, uh, open and close at about the same level. And I like to also discuss how the wicks are. In this case, they were tiny little wicks on the outer, outer sides. And that said to me, yes, if we do get a turnaround, I had a number of aspects that I were looking, was looking at, especially when you get to the 90s, so 27,200 and 90, 27,390s. That's where the market sort of just has a little bit of a hold back before it goes to the next 100 level. Um, it didn't do that with the, with the millennial level of 27,000. It kind of went right through. Now, what we've got is, yes, we've pulled back, and everything looks like, oh, what a great, great, great timing. But we've used the technicals, and, of course, I must include the 120-minute chart, if I can find that. There's a 120-minute chart. There we got the Chapman Wave 5 with a little X coming up at 27,398, and we got the pullback to Chapman Wave 5 on the downside, Trough C, and then a bounce, and there's an arch formation. So you've got, look, you've got that arch formation with a lowercase h in the 120-minute Dow chart. The MACD deflected lower. The stochastic's only at 57%. 
So if this is a start. It is, let me move this away. It is a process. So we won't get any, I couldn't even put a, um, a down arrow because the MACD is not yet crossed negative. I did in the E mini, look, the ESU 119 gave me a, a down arrow at a peak E at 20, at 3023.50 because it closed decisively under key moving averages. The MACD had already turned down, the stochastic turned down, it was weaker. And that says to me that the E mini, the S&P E mini trading at 2983 as we speak, um, that 3,023.50 is a very strong level to watch. And the weekly chart, there's a, there's a good case that we might be making a peak E if all of this week we don't go even 125 cents higher above 3023.50 moves in 25 cent increments. So that's going to be what we're looking at. Now let me go through the different indices and I'll explain the same thing in the different indices. Look, S&P had a horrible day on Friday. It closed under the 14 period moving average. It made a peak F at 3017.80 on the 15th of July. Hey, wait a minute. The MACD did turn down, unlike the Dow. The Dow's been stronger than the other indices. And the stochastic is now under 80%. I like it over 80%, especially over 90. Well, it's at 73%. So the daily, I haven't even been able to put a down arrow yet because I need to wait a little more confirmation. It's getting there, and then I can put a down arrow for a sell signal, and then it might increase to a sell mode very quickly if we we're trading below 29.68 by this afternoon, by closing this afternoon, or going into tomorrow morning. Let's look at the QQQ. All, all, all of these new highs changes the picture completely, at least for the very short term. 194.19 on the 15th of July, peak F, doji, tiny little doji, it runs out of gas. There's just the way these arches are formed very often is that you get a slower, you get a diminution in the upside momentum as you begin to fade and you get to that 0%, and then you start turning down. All right, leg D in the weekly, monthly charts in all cases are still very, very strong, although they're all bumped into resistance levels, but that can be taken out. The, the IY, IWM, which is the Russell 2000, has already been in a sideways since the 1st of July at 158.03. It's been stuck, been in this range. It's going in a rectangle formation, sitting on the 200 period moving average of 153.80. If it starts to trade in the 153.40 area anytime this week, that's a pretty negative sign. Otherwise, it can go sideways. It can hold a little better because it's been worse than the others. Maybe now it will find the, the, the um, Russell small cap stocks will find some kind of support. But you have quite a few gold stocks in there, so that should have helped. Okay, let's go to gold. Gold itself is trading right now down just a fraction, down 0.2 at 1426. It, it's had this rectangle formation. I see a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience, even if it sneaks out of the, uh, the borderline upper resistance or the lower one. It keeps trying to come back until it decisively breaks one way or the other. Be careful. Um, only in the sense that that range can stay for quite a while. So if gold this week starts trading in the 1460s, that is fantastic action. That is really good action. If it just pulls back under 1400, expect some kind of a consolidation to continue, this consolidation to continue. But the gold stocks have been very good. I just wanted to show you something as we go to our break. The dollar is holding, look at this, the dollar's up 13 cents. At 97.27, look how well it's held. Even the gold is broken out to the upside. This tells me that this is the, the currency par excellence. This is the currency that everyone's going to. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman. Now it is if you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. C -c -c Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 Internationally at 727-873-7618 Hi folks, we're back. So this is at 8, uh, 18 in the morning and it's going to be recorded and played at 12, 18 this afternoon. Let's see if the S&P is still up 8.50. There's, there's some buying going on. And remember I said a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Look at this right here. You've got this from about 6.30 this morning. You've been in this trading band, trading band, trading band. I usually like to narrow it as it gets narrower, and then it breaks out. And even now, it's about to test the 29.86 resistance. And if it does that, then it can go to the 29.87.75 high that was made a little earlier on. And I'll go back to putting this as a, as a, as a rectangle, a larger rectangle formation. It went above it, went out of it. We'll see what happens here. So, and it was also a peak in the 10 minute chart. Now it's going to challenge that. So, there is some news going out. I think the earnings reports, that I, I'm not sure quite now, quite, I don't know exactly what's going on. But the, the SP went from uh, 29.81 to 29.86 in, 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 in just the span of a few minutes. And so that says it's good. So, as I was saying, the dollar is acting very well. It's not great, it's just acting very well. <laughs> and uh, it's been a sideways consolidation actually for a year now. Look at this. What was that bar right there? Oh, August, it's almost a year. Uh, next month will be a year. 96.98 was the high, 94.43 was the low, and now all of a sudden we're trading in 97.26, holding the 14 and the, and the nine period moving averages in the monthly chart. The bank is still good, stochastic said 86. Good, turning down a little bit, but still good. So I like to see this. Now, silver is trading at this particular, remember, silver was the breakout. Uh, it's done that periodically over the last year, and that's just been the climax to catching up to gold. This is different. Actually, silver led, and that's very really important. It is in leg C in the weekly chart, and that suggests it should go uh, into the 1670s, 1680s at some point very soon. This is good action. The weekly chart was looking horrible in the H pattern. Now it's a cup formation. It's looking much better. So that tells me that because of, hmm, how can I phrase this? Because of geopolitical concerns, gold was the factor of fear and was rallying. The fact that the GDX and silver, that is the gold miners, have been rallying independently tells me that this is for real, that we cannot ignore what's going on. This is this is a very good move to the upside. And the market vectors 
gold miners ETF, the GDX, trading at 27.99, up a penny right now, has broken out and has turned the 20 at uh, 27.99 right now. It's turned the 25 to 23.50 area into major support over the next coming weeks. However, what I will say is that it's the individual stocks that have been absolutely superlative. They have really done well. Many of them have doubled. And they've been doubled because they were at lows of twos and threes and fours. So it was easy for them to double. They are still, some of them are way off their all-time highs. But look at RGLD, one of the, one of the really great uh, gold stocks, Royal Gold Inc., trading at 117.21 right now. I've got this as a potential leg F on the shorter term. There's a daily, the month, the weekly chart. I don't know if this is a brand new A or an F. I'm going to put an F slash A. F, it says, oops, got to be careful. A says, are you crazy? you got to buy every single dip because there could still be a B and a C and a D. So let's just treat this as the technicals are very strong and it's acting very well. Royal Gold, uh, RGLD really strong and in the monthly chart is leg e slash b and look at this if i go back this huge cup and handle formation let me just draw it in for you not one of my favorites because invariably you come back and you test the lip of the cup in this case it'd be at 100 what's the big deal it's 117 right now um but you've got to be a little careful that at some point it doesn't pull back all right um so now what I'm doing is I'm looking at uh, get out of that. I want you to show you that the crude oil trading at 56.49, up 73 cents, is in the lower range. It got repelled at the 200-period moving average of 59.69. This is the continuous contract. And at the same time, what I am looking at is um, within this context, the whole area of the 54s, maybe 53s, maybe that has to be tested. But it does seem to have a cap to the upside, and especially since there have been a, a, a little couple of conflagrations in the Middle East. The fact that it's trading up 72 cents and not $1.72 says to me that um, there is a lot of oil out there. And that's one of the reasons why pressuring oil is not pushing the prices extremely high. Um, now, I want to talk about the TLT. The TLT, which is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund trading unchanged at 131.69, has been stuck in a range. I'd mentioned that, and I showed my subscribers over the weekend to my opening call. I showed them, oh, did I take it away? Yeah, I think I took it out. I showed them this chart um, where, now I'll find it right here. Let me get there. So go here, go there. Okay, this chart here shows you the longer term I call it my, uh, why am I hesitating? There it is. Uh, it, I call it my longer term overview of yields. And yields have been here many times before over the last uh, five, seven, eight, ten years. And all that's different now is what the Fed is saying. And if you look at this yield, it's, it's rallied quite right strongly over the last uh, week and a half. Um, yeah. It's just kind of stuck, and I, this pink line, this is the 30-year is the white T-bond yield, the TYX. Look, there it is, Truff G. I, I could call it Truff G slash C. Uh, the 10-year T-note yield, the T and X gold one or brown, is trading at uh, 20.40, 2.04. It also at the lower range, and the five-year T uh, F V F V X is the T-note yield is trading the cyan is trading at uh, one. Uh, is that 10 point, sorry, 18.06, 1.806? And look, it's been here many times. I'll move this a couple of times. I'll squeeze it closed a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, look, here's the pink line for the, let me go all the way down here. So this for the five-year, many times before. For the, uh, let's go to the 10-year, many times before. So nothing has really changed. What has changed is that, there's a little insecurity in terms of what the Fed's going to do, and 25 cents or 50 cents uh, cut. We'll see. Um, but as I say, we've been here many times before. It's really the Fed's attitude. What did concern me over the weekend in the chart that I sent, and this is uh, this is quite important, is that 
Wood, W-O-O-D, the IHS Global and Timber and Forestry ETF, failed to break the long-term down channel from June of 2018 at 83.88, straightening now to the 57 area. The arch, look, there's a dreaded H pattern, the lowercase h, it ran again, now it's a tinier one. It just hasn't been able to break out from the resistance. And if you look at the HGX Philadelphia Housing Index, when yields are at their lowest levels, uh, in the lowest level area, I should say, housing has not improved. Housing's just kind of stuck. Here. Maybe you made a peak F. We don't know if this is an alternate count. But that, to me, is a, is a concern because the, at 369 in January of 2018, the Philadelphia Housing Index plummeted to 227. But then it ran up beautifully up into the 318, 320 area. Now it's at 3, uh, 316, and it's kind of stuck. That's a little surprising. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, this is The Recorder's Show. This is 8.26 in the morning, 12.26 if you're listening to the Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks, we're back. So this is now at 8.30 in the morning. There must have been some economic news. But look, that rectangle formation that we discussed, <laughs> well, I always say a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience because every time it gets to the edge, you think it's going to break out, and then it comes back to the lower part. And then it did break out just once to the downside. Now it's back in the middle. Let's see what uh, the report, some kind of uh, report coming out at 8.30 this morning, I'm sure. Um, and the futures are still in this trading band. Isn't that amazing? Above 29.88, it breaks out upside. And below 29.84.50, breaks to the downside. Uh, and we're at 29.86.50. The Dow futures are actually up 
67. That's very disappointing after the move on Friday. It should be up about um, 89, 98, something like that. Um, so we'll see how it uh, unfolds over the period of the day. That sell-off on, on Friday, oh, yeah, let me just finish this. So the TLT, I've drawn the same kind of rectangle formation, saying that it keeps coming back into the 131 area, pops out for a few minutes and comes back in, although it did make a PG at 134.29. This is going to be important. Let's just do the TBT to show you something interesting. The TBT had a very nice move from 28.21 up to about 30.21. And now it's trading at 29.32, stuck in the middle of the range. It hasn't shown the kind of energy to the upside that you would expect if it's going to be a breakout. So I, I'm convinced that we just at this particular point, we kind of stuck in a range for yields, and that's going to be important. The euro, EUR, USD uh, trading right now, there's another rectangle formation stuck in a range, trading 1.121. The MACD and Stochastic are trying to turn up, yet the price hasn't turned up. So it shows a lot of internal weakness. USD, JPY, this is the yen dollar currency pair. Uh, made an arch formation held on the right side, but still stuck in a range at 107.92. Uh, it needs to break above 108.80, and that's going to be very important on a weekly basis if it can, for the first time in months, close above the nine period exponential moving average. It hasn't done that since uh, April, April, the week of April the 26th at 112.40, and that was it. Uh, that's the black line we're looking at. And 200 period moving average of 109.82 should be a magnet, and yet it's, it's having a tough time. Um, I haven't forgotten the uh, crude, uh, the high-grade copper. High-grade copper had a very nice move from 2.61s into the 2.79 area, and now it's just stuck at 2.73. It's having a tough time really breaking out and holding. The other thing that I want to look at is, the, is Amazon. Look at this, the, the FANG stocks, Amazon trading uh, after a peak D, very mild pullback, but it has gone under the 14-period the moving average. The MACD has finally crossed negative. Stochastic's way down 61%, but the price is held. If Amazon, Amazon starts to trade underneath the low of the 18th, 1951-55, if it starts to trade under 1950 for two days out of three, that suggests that it's in a consolidation phase. FANG means that Facebook, we've got to look at. Facebook made a doji candle. Uh, I call it uh, the two, really. Chapman Wave, Phantom Peak, or um, these are highs. Let me just explain. The high that was made at 205.30 on the 12th went to 205.33 on the 15th. And then the very next day, there's what I call a silent doji candle at 203. 205, 205. Let me just go through the again. 205.47. So that was a high. So you had two little doji candles and a pullback. It went under the 14 period moving average. It's trading just about at 198.36 right now. Oh no, it's at 199.65. Good, it's up $1.29. But the MACD did turn down, stochastic turned down weekly charts in both cases, Amazon and Facebook, still very strong. If, if Facebook starts to trade under 194.30, at any point this week, doesn't have to be a close, just has to trade under that. That's suggesting that we have got some kind of a shorter term top in place for Facebook. And it'll be Amazon as well. And Apple, Apple had um, some good news on Friday, but then it turned down and, and closed the day at the low end of the run. 203.89 right now. The high on Friday was 206.50. Let me type that in. 206.50, if it goes even one penny above that to 206.51, that kind of saves the day. But it is really just sideways in a high-level consolidation. The technicals are starting to move down. The price is holding. So if Apple starts to trade under 199, let's call it 198.70 in the next three days, that's going to say, all right, Apple's joining the crowd of the consolidation. Um, let's go to uh, next one is... Google, this is Alphabet. I like to say Google. Goog, this is not the trading share. This is the uh, Alphabet C stock. And it's trading. The high was 11.58 on the 15th, I believe it was. Trading right now at 11.35, up 4.90. Here again, look at that red candle. This is suggesting that if, if Google starts to trade, Alphabet, starts to trade at under 1,000, 
and 85 in the next two days, especially if it closes under that any time, it's, it's still stuck in a consolidation period uh, phase, and that phase should continue. In the DEN, TGODF, are those two stocks, TGODF? Um, oh, Green Organic Dutchman Holdings. All right, trading at $2.46. Yeah, this is stuck in a range. Just be careful. Now, I know that uh, the question in the den uh, has a very long-term outlook and is prepared to sit back if, if things go awry, if he has a longer-term positive outlook. I'm just going to say at 2.46, it could be stuck in a range. I'd prefer to say between 2.40 and 2.37, that's where I would nibble at it because every time it's come down to 2.30, has been a springboard to go up to the 2.60s and then come back and down again. So that's the way I would play it uh, if I was you. Um, the next thing, GTBIF. Yeah, this is GTBIF. And that is Green Thumb Industries. I... I Someone had mentioned this recently, and I looked at it, and I thought, I, I can't get into this. It's just there's something wrong with this chart. Has a big spike. It's great if you're there for the big spike, but then it can take weeks and weeks just going lower and lower, and then you think it's going to stop, and then it goes lower. I, this one I'm not going to say anything about. I don't see anything in this. It, it is a purely speculative stock trading at $9.10. It could have a little bounce, but I suspect it has a little more uh, greening to do before the thumb can grow. So let's just put it that way. Let me look at GBTC, which is the uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin trading up 12 cents, right? Now the Bitcoin funds, 13.35 uh, of 12 cents. I see a rectangle formation. It should trade in this band for quite a while. I'm just going to say if it gets close to 12 and you want to start a little position, that's better to trade it. That's better to start a position towards the 12s, so the low 12s, than up here at 13.35. And, and then you've got to just anticipate that it's going to bounce and then it's going to come back and do some retesting. I think it's consolidating after a spectacular move from $3.60 to $17.40. I would say that a uh, 10. 20. Yeah, I would say that a multiple of 3.66 to the 17.40s deserves some kind of a breather. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, 22nd of July at 8.38 in the morning. Going to be replayed at 12.38 this afternoon. And this, this part of it will be We're coming on at 12.38. Um, hey, market is, is holding nicely. Not great, but holding nicely. I'll be back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So we are looking at the FANG stocks. Netflix is trading down $1.90, down 2.05 right now at 330.26. It made a peak E in the Chapman wave at 384.76 on the 9th of uh, um, July. Let me just double check. I think that was the 9th. Yep, 9th of July. And now it's, uh, and, and then of course, and then it had already turned down one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven sessions, six sessions. It had already turned down. Uh, the MACD was very negative. Stochastic had already turned down. It was under the nine period, under the 14 period moving averages. And then the earnings came out. And it plunges down to the 320s. Hey, wait a minute. Now it's trading at 313.26. I, I discussed this in detail on Friday. I said the Chapman Wave technique that I look at is how a gap down unfolds over the following three sessions. If there's a, a, a low, especially a close below the gap down bar, that usually indicates that the doji candle, if there is a doji, or at least the, the closing price, in this case, a doji, sorry, the closing price of Netflix on the 18th of 325.21, if there is a close below the low that was 320.30, there's a good chance that any bounce will stall at the close of that day. And if it takes more than three sessions to close above, not just the uh, the candle close, but the candle's high bar of 329.85, that's usually a terrible sign saying you can rally a little bit. There's a lot more work to be done before that stock can really get going again and even try to fill the gap. So let's just look at this uh, negatively right now. The peak D in the monthly chart, in a weekly chart, it made... A beautiful cup formation. You remember we talked about that in Chapman Wave methodology. That's called the drop bucket or the double top cup pattern. And now it pulls back. And if it goes one third to halfway below the cup high and cup low, there's a good chance it's going to test the low bar. If it takes out the low bar, be careful. You could get a one to one to the downside. And there would be from 386 down to. Uh, 332, it's called, and you see something, so 50, wow, that can go even down to the 306 level, maybe even 300, uh, if there's no rally this week, that, that, wow, that's not good, and a peak E in the monthly chart says that Netflix has a, has a bit of a problem, all right, and I kept hearing people talking about Netflix as, the company. This is the one. They've done everything. They've raised prices. It was very good. Uh, you know, we look at Netflix periodically. I don't know why I even have the thing, but we do. Um, so that's that. Now, I need to talk a couple, a couple of areas that are, are important to the general market. Look at the IYT. The IYT, the Transportation iShares uh, Index Fund, at 209.44 in September, makes a peak F high in the monthly. It plummets down 
to the 155 level in December, has a spectacular rally to, to, to the 200 or 25%. I mean, that's really good to the upside. And then it pulls back to the 176 area, pops up to the trend line. And you can see what's happening here. There's an apex forming lower highs and higher lows. And it's coming into this look long legged doji candle of this month. We'll see, because if the uh, transports, and I, use, I don't use them as Dow theory. I usually use Dow theory as kind of an, uh, an inverse relationship, that if the, the, if the Dow transports are actually making new highs with the Dow, you've got to start being a little careful. If, in fact, the uh, transports are moving up with the Dow, I love that. That's a good sign. If they're moving down against the uh, Dow, in this case, is all-time high, that's really not a good sign. It's just saying that the transportations, and here I'm including XAL, which is the airlines, which had a XAL, which had a very uh, a strong session earlier in the week last week, and then started giving it back, and then Friday closed at 106.17. Um, oh, it's actually now down. Yeah, and um, that, that should be doing well. I mean, crude oil is not an issue here, and if you look at let's go to CSX, which is one of the leaders in the uh, rails, what a big move. It gapped down. Here's the same thing. We're talking about in Netflix. Look, it took out the left side low after the gap down. It closed inside a Friday, tried to rally and closed negative. This hangs around here in the 70, cannot get into the 74 area, but in fact goes to 69 in the next day or two. Uh, it closes under 69. That's not a good sign. That's the rails. Uh, truckers isn't why um, a trucker, uh, why Allegheny uh, Core Transportation, yep, that's done very nicely. That went to a peak C1, C2, double top at 710, and now it's trading at 693 and a peak C in the, in the weekly with very good technicals, and the monthly is in the leg D, Allegheny Core, uh, trading at 693.12. This is going to be a good clue because it's been a real mixed market between truckers. In fact, some truckers have done lousy and some have done really well so we got to watch that next thing i want to talk about is within the context of the various indices i i'd been discussing this for some time but the xlf i, I consider it not so much yield related but in an area in a category that is a little bit independent Look how it's held almost independently of the market it's holding it. it's not doing anything great at 27.94 um, it's made a peak E in the daily chart, leg D, uh, last week in left side, right side price time match. It has not been able to get to the 29.07 high of September, the week of September the 21st. Plunged down to 22.05, seven points. That's big, over 27%. So um, to the low of the 12, the 28th week of the 28th of December, 22.05. But then it rallies up into the 27s. So I'm, I like what I'm seeing, the high of 28.35 uh, of the 15th. It's kind of held okay sideways. Now, let me just tell you that if at any point in the next two and a half to three weeks, going to kind of mid-ish August, if the XLF, the S&P Select Financials, is able to push into the 28.90, 29.20 area, That'll confirm for me that it is a little bit independent of the market. It's not a leader. It's not a, it's not a failure. It's just doing its own thing, and I like that independence. If it takes out 2720 support, starts to trade in the 2680s, I say, you know what? This is not great action. They are really sluggish. And then that would say to me, maybe our bank stock that we've got, which is done very nicely, is going to be vulnerable to some selling. But so far, I like it. Question in the den, Oxy, there's Occidental Petroleum trading at, uh, let me just, there it comes, 52.59. Oh, I didn't, uh, you know, I, I lost some data. It's there, it's in another chart. It's just not in this chart. So let me just do this quickly. Um, daily has gone peak A, peak B, recycle, recycle, A and B, again, A, Oh, now it starts to see, and it's in leg D. At 52.33, this is good action. Weekly chart says, what good action? This is just coming off the bottom. But I do like what's going on, and I'm suggesting to you, the uh, question again, uh, just an oxy um, analysis, just says it's made a peak C failure in the uh, monthly chart, 
and went from the uh, 58s all the way to the 88s and then made a peak C minus, went to a lower low. Keep an eye on this. Now, the question is, would I buy it here or would I not? And, and it's, uh, the only question is buy, sell, or hold. And I would say to you at 52.33, I kind of like what's going on. If it's treated as a dividend stock, this is the way I, I would do it. If it could pull back to the 51.80, 50, 51.50 area, I would suggest that if you put in a stop of one point, which is 2%, and it is a 4.20, say, dividend, I think that that's a good risk reward because it's trying to get off the ground very slowly, but it's not a great pattern. Therefore, you have to have a stop. So, yes, I like it. It's at a 50 period of moving average resistance. Oxy trading at 52.59. I'm going to say a little bit of a pullback here. You could start a position on it, but have a one point stop. But it, it needs a lot of work for the monthly and weekly team. I'll be right back. That's what Chapman. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. We got, we're back, and we've got just a moment here. We've got John on the line. Hi, John. How are you? Basil, thank uh, I'm well. I uh, hope you're doing the same. Two quick questions for you, please. Uh, the yes. U.S. Treasury 10-year and 30-year yields. Can you show the Chapman wave counts on the daily and weekly charts for both and the technicals there and tell us, do those support or signal still lower yields to come, please? I'll hang up and listen. Thanks so much. Okay, very good, John. So, John, if you want to know about the yields, let me just do this. 
my, my, the way I'm looking at it right now is that the pattern that I'm looking at at the bottom suggests very strongly that there could be some more testing at 2.546 on the TYX, the 30-year, and the TNX. I think he asked me about the TNX. The TNX right now, I've got a little bit more information on that with the notation, a little doji trough D. Yes, it seems to me on the shorter term, yields are going to go, it's pointing this way, that yields could go a little higher, and I mean shorter term over the next two weeks, maybe three weeks. There's a chance. But at the same time, the monthly chart is suggesting that the yields are going to be stuck in the lower range. There's competition for yields right now to see who's got the lowest yield. So that's what I'm going to say to you. Shorter term, a balance, but stuck in the range at this particular point going towards the lows. And I think the Fed's going to be forced to, to actually try to uh, lower rates. Just keep in mind, uh, this is my show that's going to be recorded and played at noon. And the Dow just watched 20, 26,950 as support this week on the Dow. Close below that, says, yep, finally got a sell signal to sell more. Have a wonderful day and stay tuned for uh, uh, Larry event are coming straight up or it'll be Steve Rose if you're listening to the recorded show at noon. Have a wonderful day. I'll be back at the same time tomorrow morning, earlier today.